Hey, pleasure seekers. Can you believe it? We are popping the champagne and throwing confetti because we have hit an incredible milestone of episode 300. (laughs) (laughs) It's amazing. (laughs) Join us. Join us in this celebration episode where we spill the tea on what it took for the three musketeers, your favorite pleasure coaches, to conquer this sensational journey. Picture this, from sexy escapades to the trials of marriage, the baby chaos, and our journey to becoming the badasses that you know and love. We're not just hosts, we are pleasure pioneers, navigating the twists and turns of life, love, and libido. (laughs) Oh, but let's just talk numbers. (laughs) The number 300 isn't just a digit. It is a cosmic high five saying, you're on the right pleasure pack path. So buckle up, sweethearts, as we dive into the significance of 300. And from the bedroom whispers to manifesting desires, here's to us spilling the beans and embracing the power that led us to this fabulous 300 episode. Thank you for being with us, and we hope that you are ready for an empowered, laughter-filled celebration, as true to us, (laughs) because pleasure never has looked so good. Cheers to celebrating 300 episodes and turning up the heat on embracing our pleasure power. Woo! Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was it's beautiful. So, <laughs> it's so profound to to be here. And and I just like reflecting on this was like a we've been together for nearly a decade because our fr- y'all met me when I was 20 and we didn't start the podcast till I was 23. And it's so it's really our friendship began like a decade ago and this journey began like this is this past this past era this decade and here we are and from here on we're entering this next decade together this next mm-hmm. era this new era and it feels like such a new era for all yep. of us oh my god totally so i have a different. little surprise i have a little surprise for you guys Ooh. oh so and we, we'll talk about the other surprise i gave you more before. surprises, more surprises. Yeah. I have Liz, <laughs> Lindsay couldn't sleep last night, so she got busy. I did get busy. I'm yeah. going mm-hmm. to play you guys something, a little snapshot from the beginning. Oh, my no. God. I'm talking chocolate, chocolate, talk, talk, talk. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> yeah. Some of you know exactly what clit talk is. Some of you have no fucking clue. (laughs) And you just came tonight. And we thank you for that. Without you guys, we'd be just a bunch of girls up here chanting pussy and that'd be really awkward. (laughs) This was our live show. This first season of clit talk is inspired by the legendary Regina Thomas Shower, creatrix of the School of Womanly Arts, leader of the Pleasure Revolution, and the New York Times author of Pussy. A reclamation. In the studio today, we have... Hey, this is Lindsay, an East Coast girl, professional singer, moved to California, a stepmom, and a badass. I'm Sugar. I'm a 23-year-old Ashkenazi Jew. I just graduated college, finally, started my own company, and I'm a newlywed. I'm Katie. I'm 33, happily married, writer, actor, nurse. I do clit talk because it's a health conversation. And I was sick for about a year and a half when we started this project. And it was when I started really connecting with myself that I really started to get better. And and I just really realized that the world needs this. So that's why I do Clit Talk. The fact that I'm up here right now is like a big stretch. And for me, it was really having the conversations with women. And because my friends never had these kinds of conversations before. No one ever talked to me about masturbation, really. And so that was something, I'm 33 years old, and that's something that's new for me in my life. And I went from not really enjoying sex or, or pleasure, like any kind of pleasure, really. I just really wasn't taking care of myself. For me, pleasure is all about self-love and self-care and being able to breathe through my whole body, and it's healing. Where are my friends? I want to see someone under 25 up here right now. You're so ageist. I am. 
No, I'm not. I'm Sugar. I'm your token 24-year-old, and I'm also a Jew. Italian Jew. Yes. And I do clit talk for all the newlyweds and all the millennials under 25 because we are the future of pussy power. Thing you know, Lindsay, we should start a show called Clit Talk. And a month and a half later, shortly right after my August wedding, we started this full-fledged, no-shit, call-in book club every week. And every single girl on this stage right now bought that book and was a part of that. I think that's exactly why we're doing this podcast, so that young women can have a safe place to come and they can listen to our podcast and maybe not tell anyone or have a safe place. And for me, I think that part of our commitment is also setting up the next generation. I was really fortunate. My mom, when I was 15, was like, do you want me to buy you a vibrator? And I was like, uh... But... And I said, yes. And, and to have a mom like that, I'm so committed to being like that for my kids because what it did for me was like really give me the power to say yes or no. Really what was, in, what was my truth, I always knew I, I had the ability to do that. And it's part of our commitment and why I do this for my stepdaughter and why we're doing this is to create, to set up the next generation of girls. Everyone's mom can ask them if they want a vibrator. And it's not weird. It's be like really it's cool. It's like normal. It's like normal. And this is going to be the yeah, largest... That. Pussy chant in recorded history. Yes. When I say clit, you say talk. Clit, talk. Clit, talk. When I say pussy, you say pussy. Pussy, 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 pussy. Thanks, everyone. Wow. again. Wow. wow. I, I went on a journey with that. I like started crying in the beginning and then I was just like belly laughing. I had to mute myself. Whoa. We have had a time. Wow. Also, like, thank you for creating this audio time capsule. Right? It's so significant to produce, to stay with something so consistently with like producing this weekly show and releasing this weekly show. Mm hmm every week to get to 300 episodes to be here is it's just so meaningful for that you put that together and i just have to like brag about how amazing you are she actually did that for us individually putting together our individual stories and through lines from the beginning like from episode one until now and i was crying it was like prof it was profound and the way that you uh shared our transformational breakthrough stories which as I have these sexual satisfaction sessions with our community, they're asking questions like, how did you get to where you are? Yeah. And That's it's really, just so profound to listen mm -hmm. back and really see like where we started and where we are now a decade later, basically. Yeah. It's really easy to forget where you started. Mm -hmm. You know, once you've had the breakthrough, it's already happened, right? And that's just something that we really teach now in our community is to and practice ourselves you know as much as possible to stand in our accomplishment <laughs> ongoingly but I feel like the three of us have really held each other uh you know accountable at, with uh grace and love and just right. like the gentlest touch you know it's just been really an incredible journey and the time capsule madison that was like so perfect that's like what she, it's like our whole journey yeah. individually it was a profound gift to have given that to both of us and to have created that and i love your insomnia angels because you like you, you're like a mad scientist creating magical shit for pleasure positive living as a company yeah. and like it just it really means the world we're actually going to post those on our patreon if you want to become a vip listener that's where we've got bonus content i mean just like this is an example um yeah. Lindsay's entire wedding episode i mean we do so much magic over there and it's just a great way to like get in and just start um being more in you know getting more resources your way as well so you can head over to our Patreon and um, check those out. It really is a throwback it, to where the th the show started because we were really behind the scenes and it was this tight knit little community. So it is patreon.com backslash clip talk confidential. We haven't changed that because that's what it feels like. You know, we still are pleasure positive living by clip talk. So exactly. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm really present to is how like over time, 
we can get desensitized to our own greatness. Mm-hmm. Like we can forget. And you all, all of you all listening to, you're longtime listeners. For the most part, you've been with us since episode one. And it's it's, like, you've come so far probably in your journey, right? And to get mm -hmm. present to like where you started when you started listening to this show. Well, one thing that I noticed in creating each of your, you know, audio time capsules, as well as listening to the, what you just heard in this episode was um, one of the first episodes we did. It was a live show to really kick off the podcast. And it was the world's first interaction with Clit Talk now. Mm-hmm. In person. In person. And it's interesting. Something that I noticed in flipping through old episodes is in life there are themes. When I said this in the live show. Having the ability to really say yes and no. I and wrote that in, down. In my time capsule, it was saying no to the ex my ex and so I had that and what I notice about this journey and staying inside of a pleasure conversation is there's different layers to the themes in your life we've each had you know common themes throughout the last 300 episodes seven (laughs) years and it's like I had this knowing in the beginning and then I had to live it Mm -hmm. in real time in front of people and talk about social accountability right if you're preaching this shit you better be living it Mm -hmm. and Mm. and it's it was so cool i i caught the first time i ever talked about my now husband and i wouldn't even say his name remember we called him the wizard the wizard the wizard and it's just like i have a question for you guys Mm. If you could, if you're, so I'm you like guys, already crying. Like I'm just, <laughs> cry, I'm just like weeping. Like I could just weep in on cue right now. You're backstage at that first live show. Oh God, yeah. You today pulls you aside. Back then, what do you say to yourself? Mm. Let me cut my pussy for this one. <laughs> yeah, what do I right, say pussy, to myself? You heard the question. What did, what did we what do we say to myself? Ourself. <sighs> they already love you. You don't have to prove anything. Just be yourself and believe in yourself. For me, I would say trust the process. Trust the process. Mm. Like if you're really authentically connected and within community and vulnerably authentically sharing your life, like this is why we've created Pleasure Positive Living. That's what people come to us for now. It's so cool. And um, it's just walking through it, through any chapter of your life. We just said 10 years we've been in this conversation together. Like we've known each other. Yeah. We've we've known known each other for 10 years, eight years podcast. Seven or eight years. Yeah. 300 episodes, whatever that is. 300 episodes, whatever that is. (laughs) Well, it was really, it was really long time. (laughs) We were, we were doing the book club before that. If you count that. True. Mm Mm-hmm. I count it all. I count the team management and leadership program. <laughs> it, it all counts. I think I think I would <laughs> hug myself really good and say, uh, you've got this. Don't forget to enjoy the ride. Oh. Mm. And I think it's ironic, right? Because I guarantee you we could be listening to this episode eight years from now. We'd probably give ourselves the same advice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, it's interesting because this is, I'm coming into like the 10th year of my relationship with my husband. And we're also kind of in like that, that 10th year of our friendship. And I'm about to turn 30. And this is the 300th episode. And it really does feel like there's a, a new era that we're, we're stepping into. And I believe our listeners get to step into as well. We've been in season five for the last two and a half, three years. Three years? We, we have well, decided that we are going to start like, a new season. We're just season. not going to do a new season. 
It's like, season six. This is the <laughs> longest season ever. ever. We'll, we'll finally have a season six. I think it's. I think it's good to you know. We're lucky we have this podcast. It's almost like we've been on a reality show. We can go back and literally hear our voices. We can revisit that. I think it's really important to reflect on the past. And also, you know, it's the end of February, but like wipe the slate clean and like declare a fresh start. And so one of the things that we did in the, I think it was the 100th or 200th episode celebration, we looked at the spiritual significance of those numbers. And so I thought that would be really cool to bring back into this episode. So I'm going to create this little blurb that I got, you know, through cool. the internet um, and zhuzhed it and open up a conversation. So 300. And what's interesting is the next, what I realized is the next 100 episodes will all be in the 300s, right? Mm-hmm. So 300, this powerful angel number, encourages you to trust your intuition. Reminding you that you're on the right path, aligned with your life's purpose. Compromising the energy, or sorry, comp- 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 like putting together the energies of three and zero, it symbolizes creativity, self-expression, growth, and new beginnings. Embrace the message that your thoughts and intentions are manifesting into reality urging you to stay positive and focused on your goals. From a spiritual perspective, 300 signifies a journey towards spiritual enlightenment, guided by the ascended masters. Whether it matters, whether it's matters of love, relationships, career, or spirituality, the number 300 is a divine reminder to have faith, trust your journey, <laughs> and continue moving forward with confidence and determination. Didn't what I com- just say trust the process? <laughs> and I said, and I said, and I said, uh, I said, uh, trust your journey. That's what I said. Like enjoy the journey. <laughs> so I forgot that that was in there. What I said. That. That's amazing, Madison. What were you gonna say? It's yeah. It's it's. Uh, it's a profound meaning for where we're at as well as as an organization and again like what the what it took to create the to create these last 10 years you know and then now looking at who do we get to be to write the next 10 years of pleasure positive living's movie mm-hmm. and that is like the sourcing that is like when we say being responsible for our pleasure it's like being literally at the source and create and and knowing you you are at the source and creating from there and i just feel that so much with this number and this like download is the biggest confirmation to continue this journey and just to keep it so real with our listeners like we have all had other careers we all have had other life commitments i mean katie with raising her two children it's always been a conversation of how to sustainably continue this podcast and this company and so that's what thank you to all of you who have been supporting uh, proud supporters in the patreon and our vip listeners and to all the people who have done our signature masterclass courses and digital courses we thank you so much for supporting us for trusting us and keeping us going i think one of the it's you know doing a podcast is so interesting we're in a studio together but then being able to interact with people since we launched our you know the pleasure our coaching programs and really stepping into the distinction of pleasure coaches right we've been researching it for eight years you know and being able to see people's lives transform is something in my wildest dreams that girl standing backstage of that live show it was still about me at that point and i think that when your mission is bigger than yourself that's when you can have the resilience to keep going and not Absolutely. that it's always been easy for us. It is not always no. been easy for us. It's been, <laughs> but 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 I would what I would say is it's something that I could not imagine not having in my life. Yeah. You know, I can't imagine where my life would be. This structure, it would be wild. And so, but yeah. I do want to bring it back to our listeners, right? The people who have been with us 
what would each of you like to say to the people, especially those who have been with us? I know we get letters. I've heard people have re-listened since the beginning, like multiple times. That's wild. <laughs> I love it so much. I love them so much. What would you like to say to our, our shout out audience? to Victoria? We love you. <laughs> yes. Mm. So many people to shout out. I feel yeah. like. I think yeah, that's a great inquiry so many to have. Thing, so many things were about that were said in the threads, the how you threaded everything together. There's just so much to walk through in this conversation. And there's highs and lows. And it's just so fun to be there for all of it. Yeah within this conversation like how do you keep pleasure alive yeah right. what needs to shift what are the conversations you need to have what mm -hmm. <laughs> what doctor do you need to go talk to you know well, i was just gonna well, say well, that I, as as this journey continued for me the more i saw where healing was wanted mm -hmm. and my, yes. and that those like the, th the traumas that I didn't even know were there, I was able to like finally face because the, the, co the stepping, owning my pleasure gave me the courage and confidence to be able to, you know, uh, heal those wounds. And I think that's one of the p most powerful things about pleasure is like when we, when we go down the journey of connecting with our body, like our body will start to tell us things like, oh, you're ready to lesson now? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Let me show you <laughs> how, how I can have more pleasure in my body. Please, please heal these wounds. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and that is, shift. again, being responsible yeah. for your pleasure sometimes looks like. Mm -hmm. And it's an it's ongoing an conversation. We talk about, you know, you'll hear them called limiting beliefs. We call them pleasure blockers, right? The thing that is blocking you from that ultimate mindset, from you experiencing every you know drop of joy that this lifetime has to offer and it's something that i am still uncovering right that that courage to stay in the conversation just recently and i had to do all the work that i've done to even get to the possibility of having this realization i'm sitting there with my husband the other night and we're having this profound conversation i didn't think you could have conversations like this with somebody and I realized that I made a choice when I was 13 and I experienced my first heartbreak. And, you know, that guy started dating my best friend behind my back and it hurt so bad. I was never going to fully open my heart again until I knew unequivocally that I was safe. And I didn't realize how lucky I was to have my husband because he is so smart. He realized that and took a basically a, a leap of blind faith that, that I would fully open my heart. And I just, I, I, I was like, wow, holy shit, that what a, what a trap to have been in. And, and it took all this work of eight years to even realize, you know, I am love the timeline of my life, but there's a reason I didn't get married till 38. And who mm. knows if I even would be married today had I not started this journey eight years ago. I don't think so. There was a predictable future. And until we bring in something to disrupt that predictable future, Damn. she can go sideways. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's called doing the work right there. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's ultimately again, like, what we ended up doing here, right, is the work. That I guess it's like going back to like to source our life. It is no one's fucking job to give us pleasure or make us orgasm and to truly like get become the creatrix and like sorceress of your pleasure sourcing that from a place of like knowing you are responsible for it. You are the creator of your reality and getting fucking real about that and getting like, all right, that means fuck. All right, I got to I'm going in. I'm <laughs> going in fuck. inward. Yeah. <laughs> means okay, fuck. So I have, all right. I have a, I have a question looking back on this whole journey getting present to who we were when this project started what is one thing i know we're grateful for a lot what is the thing you're most grateful for mm. right mm. away my children not a predictable future <laughs> was not was not
Yeah. I mean, I'm so grateful. And how you just described your heart fully opening up to once you felt safe. I feel like that's happened two more times for me mm. with each kid. It's like I I could totally like that's what I thought of when you said that. And it and then what going back to threading what Madison said about like <laughs> the trauma that is exposed when your heart is burst <laughs> open. <laughs> right? And like you're going to want I mean, I've been so grateful to have my community and my family support me through this entire journey and mm -hmm. our Clitorati community, everyone writing in and sharing what we were sharing was making a difference and changing their lives radically for the better. We're like, what? We're like, okay, great. <laughs> um, like that has been just a miracle, I think. Um to have been at the uh, source of this project that is so much bigger than any of us individually um, has been, you know, just a really huge privilege to be a part of. Madison, are you about to cry? I've just like been holding in these fucking <laughs> tears. Oh, but, no, they're coming down my face now. Beautiful. Um, yeah. You're just leaking. I'm so grateful for my relationship. It was the first thing that really was there for me. It's just like my partner for my through line was really like, I think acceptance and owning who you are, self-acceptance and being able to be proud and, 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 and share with the world. And to have had my partner stake with me, stand by my side and support me in continuing this podcast and then just, having this be a business and then ultimately culminating with this recently ch I chose to leave my other work and be full time with pleasure, positive living. And he's fully supportive in me making that choice. And I, it's like such a gift. Just, um, and in addition to that though, our community, like our sister goddess activism support system, getting to talk to you ladies throughout the week and have something that we've created that's big, bigger than ourselves. Like I'm so grateful to be in a conversation that's not all about me. <laughs> right? I, our heads are a scary place to be. Like, a gr oh, like one of my biggest like <laughs> hacks for our, our biggest hacks for the spiritual growth is like go do something, create something for others. Like – do something bigger than yourself. We call it a, a desires roadmap. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm grateful that we've maintained this like possibility around this conversation. It has contributed so much to my spiritual growth and my journey of healing. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I started the show, I was still grappling with my wound around being like mad that I was a woman. Mm -hmm. and like genuinely mad and my dad you know raised me like a son in a way <laughs> and then I was teased for being a lesbian because word got out I made out with chicks and I was really good at basketball so like you know they just assumed um hot and saying yeah um gosh to yeah to just that that part of my time time capsule that you created for me is just like that fact that I've there have been a lot of people that have written and sharing that they came out because they heard me come out. Because when I started the show, I was not um, openly bisexual in my relationship. I was heterosexual and um, in a monogamous relationship. I remember and, in the studio when you first were, were like, guys, I think I might be bisexual. Well, I had been, I had been hooking, like been with girls since I was like really, really little, like eight, eight, like always going. And I was going down on girls then. And I had girlfriends before Austin. So I always knew I was bisexual, but I just didn't, I thought I put it behind me. You know, I thought I was like, oh, I'm married now. And so right. to be able to accept mm -hmm. the, to accept it, that I, I, I can't hide that I'm bisexual and it's actually limiting me in my self-expression fully. I can't even put into words just how grateful I am that I've been able to 
um, stay in this conversation with the two of you and keep possibility alive in my own life to get to the place of it making a difference for other people. <laughs> yeah. We were here. I was just here to like have it make a difference for me and my, right. my journey to woman and overcoming shame around being a woman. And little did I know, you know, that it would become well, my I mean, full-time job the, now. <laughs> that's the power of this conversation. You know, you, when you, when you're first introduced to it, you're just lit up. And I would say the thing that I'm the most grateful for is having the support and the courage to fully open my heart and to deeply fall in love. And I did not know that marriage was going to be this amazing. I really, like I had, like, you can't, you don't know how it changes you until you know. And mm -hmm. it's the most amazing, breathtaking experience of my life. I am i didn't know I could be this happy. I didn't know I could feel this loved. I didn't know that I could love this much. You know? I didn't think you could have it all. But mm. having the support to stay and keep digging and to know that I was worthy of that and doing the work to have my dreams come true and have be married to my soulmate. I remember there was a moment where Rochelle Lever came on and she was this is when I was with my ex and she was talking about her marriage and she, I don't remember what she said to me exactly, but it, it jolted me. It was something, something to the effect of, well, if that's how it is, is that really what you want? Mm. She cuts right, right yeah. through. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're on my show. Yeah. But now I, <laughs> but now I get it. Yeah. She was yeah. in a marriage that I admired. And it also really pissed me off that I didn't have that. And I'd done mm -hmm. so much transformational work and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the people in our, our community and our programs, I think, come because they've reached a point where they're pissed off and they're ready to be selfish bitches and have everything they want. <laughs> <laughs> Being a selfish bitch is a very empowering thing, let me tell you. Yeah, whoever told you selfish was bad is seriously absurd. Yeah. It's a different definition of selfish, for sure. Yeah. It's not a bad one. Nope. Yeah. Uh, so let me ask you one final question. So the, the number 300 is really encourage us to trust our intuition. I know. As a declaration, what's next for you? In these next hundred episodes live on air <laughs> <laughs> however you want to answer the question i mean i think the thing that popped out to me the most in the 300 is that it does really feel like a new beginning yes it really feels like a brand new life brand new perspective brand new business mm -hmm. um and I'm really excited for what's next. I'm on this for the, for the ride, you know? <laughs> I'm inspired to like sing my answer and then say some things. Okay. Were you warming up? Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Love it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the year I'll become a millionaire. <laughs> And really just be everything I do, be what I'm passionate about, what fills me up with joy, brings me pleasure. Like this is the era where everything that I do is joyful and fun and like in my dharmic path and always deepening my intimacy with my husband. I'm excited to create the next 10 years of our love story and the next 10 years of our sisterhood together. Mm. I second yeah. that. I'm really Maybe excited to the next 10 years in my relationship yeah mm -hmm. but episode 400 right like what are we declaring tv show 
<laughs> I mean, I would say I am creating, you know, I've done so much work on the domain of romance and self-love, and I am really looking forward to creating around career and lifestyle and motherhood, um, you know, and creating family. Mm -hmm. And really, like, waking up every day excited. If there's an area of my life that doesn't light me up, having the courage to say no. Mm. Create something different. Mm -hmm. And to all of our literati, we love you so much, you have no idea. Thank you for... If you've listened to all 300 episodes, please send us an email. We want to send you a gift. <laughs> we want to know. We want to know you. Um, really and truly, please, we love hearing from you. Send us a DM. Send us an email. Let's hop on a Zoom. <laughs> Let's get to know you. Um, it's, this is our love letter to the world. Is really what I got present to. This podcast and this community is our love letter to the world. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for <laughs> deeming it worthy of listening to. <laughs> for real, <Right>? though. <laughs> for real, though. Lifelong self-worth journey. Yeah. In all of its expressions. And uh, with that glitterati, we are going to see you next Tuesday. <laughs> for many hun hundreds of episodes to come, hopefully. <laughs> Kind of want a pussy chant. I was literally like, should we bring Let's it back it. for the... It's Can we? Should we I really want to. For the 300th episode, we're going to bring back the pussy meow, chant. Meow. Drop a beat. Drop a beat. Drop a beat. Uh, here we go. Pussy. 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 Meow, meow, pussy. Pussy, 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 pussy. All right. See you in the next pussy. season. <laughs>